Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to the All or Nothing podcast with myself, Billy Moore, and today's special guest is one of Britain's most decorated amateur boxers, now professional, Peter McGrail. Peter, thanks for coming on. So, Peter, it's a pleasure, mate. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin. Yeah, so uh, 27 years of age now, professional boxer, but obviously it all started, my boxing career when I was 10. Um, Walked into the Everton Triangle, which it might have been one of my friends already went there, Aaron, and uh, five of us played for a footy team, Tans and Boys, our footy team, so, and we were naughty, we, 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 were a good, we were a good side, and um, winning all sorts of that, doing all sorts of double-doubles and that, and just winning everything, but he was he was going to the Everton Triangle, and uh, there were six of us that went to the same school, and I think five of us, six of us that went to the same school that played for Tans and Boys, and five of us who went to the same school and played for the footy team, we're all, all ended up going to the Evan Ned Triangle then. Yeah. And um, it went from there. And just to this day, it's only out of that five, there's only me and one of my friends, Anthony, who's now turned coach. He boxed for years, but now he's now turned coach. We're the only two now who's uh, t- to do with the gym from, that was that, 17 years ago. But I think um, on like the first week or two, uh, then it was... Paul Stevo and Mick Stevo, they were they were like my coaches growing up for years. Um I think Paul might have said to me dad or Mick, one of them, um he he he'd be a national champion and um and um I I was three years later I become a national champion and it's loads has gone on since then and, and obviously we're here today but I um <coughs> I lost my first three fights on a row. Um, that must have been hard yeah. because you know, um <sighs> That, that's, and sometimes it's hard to come back from like a first loss, mm. second loss, yeah. but then a third, and you must have been thinking, "Fuck, yeah. am I am I made for this?" I or? know, I know. Well, well, I was eleven. Know what I mean? And it was, I'd always just loved sports anyway. In school, I was just always got myself involved in everything, going through school, and and uh, the boxing was just. I don't know what I mean. I would, what would I have been? Probably about thirty-two kilos or something. You know, just tiny. I think um, my coaches always said that was the first like. The first loss, I think they were all split decisions. Don't I mean you know what amateur boxing is like? But yeah. obviously, they, they, they were losses. And um, the I think my coach always says the first two, I was sort of got out the ring still, not like smiling, but you know just like obviously I've you know, got pure adrenaline, haven't you? Don't yeah. I mean I'm eleven, I'm just being in the, being in the ring having my first my first two fights and that. And then I think he he said on like the third one. You could tell that like when I got out, I was a little bit more disheartened. Yeah, than like. The first two, do you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know whether anything changed in the gym. As as I said, I was only what, 11, 12, 13 going through that. Going through that, but I um, at the age of after them first three fights, I won. Went on to win like I think it was seventeen or nineteen in a row, and that was when I won my first schoolboy title. Um, I boxed for England for the first time in the Three Nations, and I won that. I beat uh, the Welsh champion. And then I beat the Scottish champion like seventeen two or something in the final, but um, it was like it was then. You know what I mean? I, I, I went away, uh, probably the first time going away from my mum and dad and that. Yeah. And obviously it was with Team England. It was only what would have been thirteen, fourteen, probably thirteen. And um, obviously I was just away with all mad people from, like, from Newcastle, from. Um, it's it's ex- all, it's all it's over it's England, know what I mean? Just it's exciting, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because you, you know you're a, you're from Liverpool and mm. you travel out a little bit and you start meeting different people. Yeah, yeah. And you learn about different things and and it's like it's, it's just it's it's like it's, it just opens your world up yeah. a little bit more. It is. It's mad. And I see. I've only ever been to the Everton Red once, and um, it was for the NABCs mm. years ago, obviously. But um, you know, it was one of those where you had to fight a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the days. But mm. I was lucky I only had to fight the once 
and I won that fight. Uh, Paul King was uh, our coach in the, uh, in the Ambrose back mm. then. Yeah, yeah. And then I think he went and moved over to the Everton Red. I'm Did sure he, it was that. You might, I'm not sure, yeah. I, I sure know that was, uh, Paul, obviously my coach, Paul Stevo, I know his coaches were called Joe Curran and Harry Curry, maybe. So yeah. whether or not it might have been the Rotunda, as you say, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I think I think his coaches were Joe Curran and Harry Curry, yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe mm. uh, maybe I've got that mixed up, but it doesn't matter. He was <laughs> part of our coaching team growing yeah. up. He was the first person I ever met Yeah, yeah. in the... In the boxing world, yeah, and he yeah, said to yeah. me, he said to me when I put my hands up, he said, "Tell you what, you've got a good defence." <laughs> I was always getting fucking battered in school, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I was always putting my hands up. <laughs> and he said, "Well, look, you've got a great guard, mm. you know. Let's let's work on that." Mm. So initially, you, you you're from Anfield, yeah, yeah. right? So you, you mentioned before you were there mm. till about eight, so you're yeah, not going to yeah. really recollect much of growing up that mm. area, you know? Did your family ever feel that you were ever going to go down a path? Because there's, see, what I see now and what you probably see yourself as young lads on the streets that got fuck all to do, right? I'm speaking to them all the time, you know, what's going on in some of these, we've got nothing, you know, there's no interventions, um, the police are pulling us up all the time, you know, some of them are talking about like mixed martial arts and going to boxing gyms, but they're not like consistent with it mm. because they're on that path <coughs> and they're on these corners. And Do you think, was that ever going to be a problem do you, do you feel in your life or did you, have you seen a few of your friends go down that road and think fucking hell what, what was different for me what did I do differently yeah well um, as you know obviously you just to yourself and yeah. Liverpool can swallow you up in many ways whether yeah. it's as you say selling drugs whether it's partying whether it's just just anything really you know what I mean there's loads yeah. of things where you can go down the wrong path but I think like boxing probably did save me from doing any of that there's probably a few times over the years where I could have went down the wrong path, you know what I mean? But through one way or another, I've either had a boxing tournament or I've had a boxing fight coming up or even just I've been going to our gym four nights a week as an amateur since the age of 11. So it's like... The likes of boxing, yeah, it's just discipline. The likes yeah. of boxing gyms, like not 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 just our gym. Like obviously I love our gym. It's that, like that, that's my home. I've been there yeah, since course, I was 10. Yeah. But it's, it's like... Even round by our gym, there's like about five gyms all within a mile. And then even when you're going out all the way, like by, by speak, and then you've got, uh, you've got like Kirkdale, Rotunda, there's, name them all, the Solly, there's, there's all sorts of gyms in Liverpool. Solly on it, yeah. that's just, uh, just off the Lange, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and like, it's, they're all like, they're all doing what's helped me. They're the, the teaching kids discipline, the, keeping them off the streets, and they're giving, like, giving it a bit of direct, giving kids a direction, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think that that is probably what helped me. Partly as well, because being like, I started once I started winning national titles and I had so many national titles, I just started to think to myself like, this this is my life. This this is what I want. This is this is like I want to I want to be want to be a champion. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I think uh, it was the age of about eighteen or something, and I'd had loads of national titles, boxed for England a few times, and then I got onto GB then boxing, GB boxing. So I was going to Sheffield then Monday to Thursday yeah. every single week. So that's that's probably helped me get out of the pool as well a little bit, you know what I mean? Just get, get away from all the madness and that. But, uh, and obviously, eventually, we got to the Olympic Games and that. So. Yeah, but you switched on after yeah. your third fight. Mm. Right. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I must have, yeah. I, well, I reckon I was switched on anyway, but yeah. I was only young, do you know what I mean? But just, you're in and out, aren't you? You're just, it's, um, they clashed the skill bouts in the, in the initially, because well, we, we never had skills. Yeah, yeah, well, you, ca you can't have skill bouts, but I didn't have one. I just... Straight fight. My coach must obviously thought I was good enough to just have a straight fight, and I think the kid who boxed on my first fight, he, I think it was his first boxing fight. I don't know whether he'd had a few Thai boxing or something, but a mm. um, kid from Kirby, Brian Collins, um, yeah, he won, and then my second fight was someone called Ray Amson from Birkenhead. I ended up sparring him loads after as well. He, he, they're all good kids. I can't remember the on my fair fight, but yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just it's just mad when you think back to that long life. Exactly. But what was it like when you won your first? Well, your fourth one, the first for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I think it was on our club show in the um, in the lighthouse. We used to have our club shows in the lighthouse. Just it's by uh, by Liverpool's ground, yeah. and it's mad. The, the sheets are all like just go up in one side, and all like. I don't know how you'd explain it, but... Like an avalanche. Sort of thing, yes. Yeah. So everyone's looking to stay, everyone there, you know what I mean? And, uh, no, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think Kev Satchel might have boxed Paul Eddie on that. Yeah. So I think there was a few there to, to, to watch. Um, 
But yeah, I can remember, I can remember winning that night. I think I had a, I had a white kit on with an Everton badge. I'm an Everton fan. And we, we got Everton badges printed on. And uh, yeah, it was a good night, that. Up the South East, lad. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so going forward with you in your boxing career, did you, did you realise that you were thinking, fuck this, I'm going to want to make a living out of this and not, you know, be sh- like succumb to the temptation like you just mentioned, you know, Liverpool can swallow you up in many ways, especially like when temptation's about and it's like people are driving around in, 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 in nice cars and, you know, they're wearing, you know, bells of watches and all the grip going on. It's it's easy, in it, to go, oh, fucking hell, I've got to really get up and work and put a shift in here. I've got to go and do my runs. I've got to train like a fucking animal, right? I've got to get in the ring again. You know, potentially get me head punched in, right, for the payday, right? No. When there's kids out there the same age as you, right, driving around and whatever, and just like, just, just shotting and doing all right, in a sense. But at the end of the day, there's, it's it's like, it doesn't last, does it? No, nah. That, that lifestyle just yeah. goes fucking Pete song. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, um, I'm happy with, like, the path I've went down myself. It's uh, good. So it's just... As I said, I walked in Everton Triangle, and it's it sort of just it sort of just happened, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. I was just I t- I took to boxing, know what I mean, and I hate dieting. I'm not gonna say I love dieting. I hate dieting, but I just loved the I loved the feeling of winning. And then I was <sighs> probably weren't just the winning. It was more the I was like my mum and my dad and that, and, and all the family they'd been all over the world to watch me. They've been to literally all over the world, China, yeah. Germany, all over England, all over the years, and <clears throat> like. When I was winning national titles and winning medals, bringing medals home, showing them, even to like my nan and my granddad and that, just, you no, know, just seeing how proud everyone was. It's like, it's moments like that what make you work harder, like in the gym, you know what I mean? And yeah. just, and just that gives you a li- like an extra little bit more motivation, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it shows that you're doing something good with your mm. life and you're doing something good in the lives of others and, you know, people are, you know, talking about you in, in a positive yeah. way, which is... Which is important because I know from your own experience, you know, when I started boxing, my dad started going to the, the shows, yeah, yeah. you know, and I won my first, I think it was one of my first five on the run, so I was quite lucky, like, mm-hmm. I won my first five, but then I got arrogant. Thinking you, you was know, the boy? Yeah, I got complacent, and then I got stopped. <laughs> I didn't get stopped. I got um, a boxed a kid in, in Ireland, and I, I got robbed. It was a dinner show, and it was like, it was it was just a fucking, there was 14 scousers, and I think mm. two. Two one, one. Yeah. yeah. We all go like, like there's a, and I watched some of them fights and there were some good fights, but it was not we never had like no no such thing as dieting back then. There was no nutrition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just ate what you want, got on them scales, made sure you fucking made weight, mm. you know, and that was it. Uh, it's a bit different now. Yeah. You know, the amateurs uh, going forward. It's like fucking hell. We were fighting on dinner shows in in um, in London for fucking Repton, for against mm. Repton for fucking Turkey's during yeah, Christmas. Yeah. That was the trophy yeah, we were getting yeah. Turkey's. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a fucking it's, it's a far cry from what it's, it's like now. So you've got you've got all this 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 boxing fucking like memorabilia now, haven't you? Yeah, you know, yeah, all, yeah. All, the, all, the, all the medals, trophies, medals, trophies, you know, certificates, cupboards fucking full yeah, of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? People, you know, wishing you well and trying to sign you know. So the ABAs, mm. how did they get on? Um, the seniors. Yeah. Uh, I've been in them twice, and my first year was that the first year? I think it was the first year. Yeah, I got to the final. Was it the final? Semis or the final? But I broke yeah. my thumb in the fight. I boxed the kid. I ended up like he was sort of quite my mate before the fight and. Ended up closer to him after the fight because he was um he got on the squad as well. Callum French's name was uh, lost a fight against him. Close fight, good fight, and um, but and then I won them the next year. Whether it was the it was the, the I won the senior ABAs. Whether it was the year before or after that, but I won like the ABAs at schoolboy, junior, youth, and senior every level. Know what I mean? So yeah. and then it was that was twenty fifteen that one. So I must have won them twenty sixteen the year of the Rio Olympics. Yeah. And um, we we went out there to to Rio as well to, you no know, just for sparring just to support the lads and it was when I was there that I thought to myself like, because I could have turned pro then twenty sixteen yeah. I thought I'd been on GB for a little bit had a good experience but it was twenty sixteen that I said to myself we were out there in Tokyo not yeah. Tokyo I was out in Tokyo but we were out in um, Rio um just went out for sparring and the atmosphere in in there was just different level to yeah. any other. 
boxing stadium. show yeah, yeah that I've been to amateur wise so it was then that I, I was just looking around all there was all Mexican waves going off and that and I was just thinking like this is me this like how I, I want a bit of this so I knew I had to wait for another four years to to compete in the, the to, to try and make the Olympics know what I mean yeah. so then obviously that, that's what where was it the, the, the Olympics after that uh, Japan, Japan Tokyo yeah it? that's where so you uh, went to Japan mm. Tokyo and you went to the so I mean the atmosphere I can imagine you know it, it especially like in, in the arenas it's going to be a lesser I, did, I didn't even get what I wanted either because it was fucking it was Covid so yeah, that's shit that isn't it like there was there was only like the no the athletes and that in there so I didn't get the uh, didn't get the atmosphere that I wanted. Like, about, didn't you think about doing it four years later? Uh, another four years after Tokyo. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, nah, because it was twenty sixteen and pro. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'd what I'd done in the amateurs where after that Rio, where I said to myself, I'm going to stay on, make these Olympics. Obviously, it was never guaranteed because you've got to qualify, haven't you? Yeah. But what I'd done in that time, sort of got me like a good platform to yeah. turn pro on, you know what I mean? Commonwealth gold, two world bronzes, uh, European so games, you bronze. Had a positive amateur pedigree, that, didn't that's you? That's what I'm know, saying. It was, that was the right time to, uh, that to, for me to turn over, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's sort of set me up moving over into the pros then. Yeah. Do you think uh, do you think that co- that COVID and like the Olympics had an impact on uh, how you boxed as well? Do you feel yeah. it kind of like it, it took away it took away the atmosphere obviously did it take away the feeling of like fucking hell what, you know like the expectations mm-hmm. of what you were up against because obviously you've had the Mexican waves in yeah, the 16, yeah, yeah. In, in the 2016 Olympics and it's like wow I'm going to get all this this is going to happen anyway mm. and then you get there and it's just you and a fucking yeah well it's just, judges. It, it is it's mad that you say that Bill because of like before the Covid I was flying you know what I mean I was just qualified for the Olympics everything yeah. was happening but me and him, um, obviously different people are different because I was in the same situation as Galadia Fai and he, he went on to win a gold medal in the Olympics, you know what I mean? But me and him qualified uh, in London. I can't remember what date it was, but the day we qualified, the we got a chance to qualify first before anyone else in that tournament. But because of the COVID restrictions, the tournament got cancelled. So we, we qualified for the Olympics and then the Olympics were postponed for a year. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we qualified like something like more over twelve months before, and then it was all COVID. And then I after I come back, I we carried on that tournament to get like seeding and that. But then I got beat off a Hungarian kid, which if you look back and, and you just look on paper and that, I should be beating kids like that. And then yeah. after that fight was me fighting the Olympics, which I lost my first fight. So. For, for one way or another, I don't know why, but the COVID definitely didn't help me. Yeah. Whether it was the atmosphere thing, whether it was just... The time. The that, time, yeah. whether it was just... I don't know, but it definitely, definitely, definitely Look, I'll didn't help you, me. Like, I'll tell you something now, right, and this is from my experience. If you've never been uh, subjected to isolation, separation, uh, not being able to do what you've... You know, the normal things mm. that you've... You, you know, you've gone through life the way you've... Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. Been. Like, I'm, I'm talking from, from my experience. I've been in prisons for over 20 years, you know, and I was, I'd never glamorise it. I know what it's like to be isolated. Mm. I know what it's like to be separated from my family, uh, not being able to go where I want, uh, the door shut in my face all the time, right? And I'm on lockdown. So lockdown, for me, was like just fucking being in a cat prison. Yeah. Right? So it was, it was a different experience. I know from the experience of friends who've never been and seen mm. and done that kind of stuff because they haven't been down that path I've been, which is, you know, fucking hell, well done because, you know, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. How difficult they found it, right? How difficult they found it. Having to stay at home, the fucking mental fucking torture, the boredom, trying to entertain yourself, trying to train, trying to, you know, and the restrictions that you're under. Yeah. And that, you're, under, mm. you're, under, you're under a lot of fucking pressure, yeah. right? You know, postponed for a year but your head must have been like what the fuck mm. right so everything that you've built up has just come crashing down so someone has to fucking pay the fucking the, the price know. for that mate it's, and, and, and unfortunately you had to pay for that price mm. I believe that if that was not the case and you'd have went out there right with the skills that you've got right and that you took with you that you wouldn't be in the position you are mm. right you'd have been like Picking up a gold medal. Therefore, that was the, the that was that was obviously always the plan. That's yeah. what I had in my head, and 
so there's a lot of contribute there's a lot of contributing factors yeah and shit does happen and unfortunately it's fucking happened in at the wrong time for the right patient mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. it, it, and that's that's shit but then you've made that decision right you got beat you were telling me by a tie kid yeah right so what happened there what tell us talk us through how yeah. that, that fight was so obviously in that one yeah nah, no 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 uh, no disrespect to the Thai kid the lovely kid cha cha but the um sparred him a few times over the years but it was like his third olympics you know what i mean yeah. um very experienced kid but he was about 36 i think i was about 25 26 yeah so he's like 10 years old 10 11 years older than me and I'd sparred him quite a yeah. few times. He'd been over to Sheffield. I think I'd sparred him in like Kazakhstan as well when like people had when countries had met up and that. So I was um I was fully confident in myself, fully confident in myself against anyone anyway. But yeah. more so, like on that day I was like just getting beat didn't come into my head, know what I mean? I just thought I was too good for him and, and this and that. But sort of got into the fight, like in the day and that's I had in my head, I had a way with the coaches, we we, we came come up with a bit of a game plan and it was like it was just the wrong game plan. What, yeah. what I literally just I've come out and I was half just boxing like it's like it weren't even me you now if I ever yeah. if I ever watched it back and that I was just rushing things, I was weren't being clever and I just played into his hands. He was just he was just clever, just more relaxed, just like just let me play into his hands. That's basically yeah. what happened and then and obviously them uh, amateur fights that thing goes aren't he three round fights, so yeah. I've come it's back at the end of the first <laughs> and we're round down, you're like once you once you lose that first round and you've got you sort of got to chase it then so I was chasing it more and sort of playing played into his hands more but it um it's one of them things but it weren't meant to be it's yeah, lessons layers as well yeah I did I it was yeah a million percent like I um just know that it's never to rush things you know what I mean because because ever rush things in in the pro career it could be worse off you'd, you'd end up getting flattened you know what I mean so it's um and there's always a positive side to things I I I like to believe the so obviously I got beat there, and because of the COVID, we had to get off early. Um, so I've come home, but like by a week later after getting home, I got a phone call and saying, "Do you want your debut?" On it was when Liam Smith boxed Anthony Fowler, mm. and that was like one of the biggest bills in Liverpool for, for time, and the whole city was like it was, it was a proper fuss Beaming about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then Eddie Ng gave me a good slot on the bill, so that was sort of the. The silver lining of, of of it all, know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. I would have rather have got an Olympic medal and not had my debut on that. But I got to have my debut on 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 the big platform like that, and and I'll never forget that. My debut was sick. I was walking out to the, the arena was basically full, and yeah. that, that was a belter. But I'll um, that Olympics will always be with the me. Like I'll always be good to the bar. The, yeah. The feeling you get from whether it's like walking out onto a onto a onto a stage. If you're fucking like the likes of Jamie Webster, I mean, you can just the feeling you yeah, get from yeah, the, yeah. the people in your own city, right? And 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 the atmosphere, the atmosphere that that you've got is incredible. It's mm. it is electric. Oh, it's sick. And uh, Liam performed fucking incredibly well. I know. Mean, put fucking team machine to <laughs> he bed, did, didn't, didn't he? he? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought he fucking rocked them a little bit. Uh, yeah. Fowler rock yeah. beefy at one on. point yeah yeah well it was, he, he was it was half back and forth wasn't it and, yeah but he hasn't um, had a fight since has he nah I think Fowler yeah. nah I think he's um, I think he's packed it in now he's retired he's, he's, got, he's doing well with a few other things so yeah. he's yeah, um, so, yeah, cause that, doesn't that, need to box that's, he went right off the mm. radar after so yeah, yeah. M- moving on um, now he's up against you know the other the U-Bank now isn't he again that's yeah. another so, are you going to get a bill on that uh, what like fights on that show? Yeah. Well, that, that's that's it. Um, you know, on the way it's like promotional companies, isn't it? That's yeah. Sky, in it? Boxer, yeah. I I box with, I'm promoted by Eddie in a match yeah. room, so I'm waiting on the date getting confirmed. It's either going to be the end of September or early October. Hopefully, yeah. this next one's meant to be start pushing on for I titles. Like, and I like that. Eddie, I like Eddie. Yeah. I bumped into him. We had a chat in there when he came down to the docks and he was saying, <laughs> doing a little bit of a marching. Big fella, didn't he? Yeah, he's massive, isn't he? Yeah, didn't yeah. realise how sorely he was, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Proper fucking wide boy. Um, so, 7-0, five knockouts. Mm. Brilliant start to your career. It's all right, isn't it? Better than your amateur in the first yeah. days, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't like to go, I'll tell you what though, you wouldn't <laughs> like to go, you wouldn't like to start yeah. your fucking professional <laughs> career with three fucking nah. losses, split decisions, and then start winning, you know what I mean? Nah, you'd be getting some stick of it, you off everyone, lad. <laughs> <laughs> and you get... So there's a few young lads like yourself that are Jack McGann, uh, Ennig- what's his name, Ennigan? Uh James. James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's doing really well. Mm. There's a few I've been yeah, watching yeah. a few few of the young lads going mm. through the the uh, the rounds over the years and uh, seeing them building up, you know, up on 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 a um, on, on the fucking tally up fucking mm. wins really. You know what I mean? So there's a few good solid kids at different weights. You know, you're super bantam, man. Yeah? Super bantam. Yeah. Do you ever feel that's going to be a struggle for you? Because the likes of um, you, you, you mentioned them before, uh, the Ice Man. Kev, Kev Satchel. Kev Satchel, yeah. Oh, Kev, he was unbeaten. He was, you know, know. He was unbeaten yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking champion. Mm. Right. British Commonwealth European. Yeah. He had all three at one point, didn't he? Just unfortunate that he's um, he couldn't get a fucking fight. No. Because of his weight. Was he like something like straw weight or fucking no, really? I think he was fly. Fly? Fly, yeah. So it's he? like one of the lightest weights. Like. No, I think that was the struggle for him. I know. It's just hard when you're the low weight, isn't it? Cause, but, it's, it's mad because they, they say like the lower weights. They get like they do get paid less than the high weights yeah. just because the heavy, the heavy weights they're just you're fighting they're more Mexican exciting though, aren't they? Like, yeah. but, well, the, it depends what you're what you're after really. If you're if you're a proper proper boxing fan, yeah. then the lighter weights are probably better because yeah. the lighter weight fights the, the, the skill, the yeah. skill in and out, all crazy ability. You know what I mean? And then if you're just after knockouts, which most people are, then heavy them weight. heavy weights you're gonna like. You'd go and watch two big she men fight as opposed to two little men, wouldn't you? I'm telling you something now, right? And I'll fucking say it. I will, I will say it, right? I see these everyweights every now, right? Now, I'm, I grew up with the likes of Tyson, fucking bone crushers. Yeah, yeah. Mate, mate, proper fucking, animals. Proper, I'm right? It, yeah. Proper, like, fucking, they were going to yeah, war, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, Le- Lennox Lewis, fucking, you had uh, Sugar Ray. All these fucking class. Proper. Fucking. Legends, among Legends, it, yeah. right? Um, Roberto the Ram, the mm. Stone. Uh, it was just fucking. It was just an incredible era to grow up in, yeah, yeah. right? Now you've got like okay, the Gypsy King. He's, he'll fight fucking anyone now, right? Mm. He's, who's he fight? He's fighting this kid who's in Ghana, isn't he? He's never even had a fight. He's not a boxer. He's um, it's, it's fucking bizarre. Anime, isn't he, yeah, yeah, it's bizarre, and it's so it's, everyone's fighting fucking For anyone. Don't really, don't yeah. really. Jake Paul fighting yeah, fucking it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's Diaz, it's, Nate Diaz, isn't it? That's who he's fighting. Uh, one of the Diaz brothers, I think. Who Jake is? Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether it's boxing or MMA, though. It, it, I don't it, even know. But the like, fair fight, play to them, they make them dog, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's, the it's a bit mad. Sorry, like. Yeah, the fight with him and Sorry Fiori, they just made millions between I know, them. I know, right? and, 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 and I know. I've seen some like <laughs> some comments from some really like fucking like solid boxers who've been through the ranks and through the fucking years, you know, in the stables and everything. I think fucking hell, we can't even get a shot. We're no, it is every like we're we're mm. we're giving it, we're giving our all for everyone, and we're on the stage and we're on, we're in the ring and we're giving it, and, and we're coming away with fucking less than we go in with because we've got to pay this, pay that. Yeah. We're getting cuts there, cuts here, it is. and yeah, and then someone can just go in the ring. who's just a YouTuber, right? Fucking hell, I might do it myself. I might just I go know. to fucking Saudi <laughs> and fight someone. You know what I mean? Just get me head punched in for a few quid. Do you make things worse for yourself though? Because the like fair play to them, they're making a bit of dough. Well, a lot of dough. Respect them, fair play. But it's like some of the interviews that they're coming out with after it and that making out like they're gonna be become proper boxing champions and that. And like if they just fucking tell the truth and just fucking yeah, stop chatting shit, they're not gonna be boxing champions. They haven't got it in them. You know what I mean? No. But obviously, it's fair it, play to them that they're yeah, out there yeah. getting a bit of change in. So and that's that's it. They're paying the paying the bills mm. and, and fair. Yeah, like you said, fair play. It's just it's just it is comical, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm looking at like 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 the fighters of today, right? You know, I mean, like Liverpool beefy is he brilliant, but mm. like Liam, you quality know, fighter, yeah. quality fighter. He's um, you know, him and him and Nick Callum, right? Just that, you know, I, I just think Callum reminds me of like a Marvin Agler, mm. you know, like that style. I'm on it, yeah. So big, I think he took it. It was it was a tough fight between him and John Thingy, uh, John Rady, yeah. I know John, John made it all up for him, didn't he? John, John was a tough fight mm, for him. I, I like John, right? Yeah. But John's southpaw inside, yeah. right? He couldn't fucking get him. Big kid, Callum, and then you've got John who's yeah. on the inside. It was just, a, it, it made him look really yeah. fucking awkward, you mm. know what I mean? Uh, and then John went and fought. Canelo did it, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, he's just, the, he's the man, isn't he? So Canelo who's, the man, like. who's up against you in the... In At the minute. Who's, who's ranked number one in your uh, in your ways? There's there's a Japanese kid who just come up from bantamweight, uh, Anui. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's been knocking everyone out, and then um, he's fighting a kid called Stephen Fulton. I don't yeah. know what belts they're fighting for, but then there's a uh, it's them two, and then there's a Filipino kid who's got two belts. They're like the four. There's like four base. It's mad in it. There's four yeah. belts. IBO. There's four IBF, belt, yeah. uh, well, there's five with the IBO. Yeah. There's WBC, WBO, WBA. IBF and then there's the IBO as well so um, 
they like the, the, that's who's got the four belts at my weight like but yeah. I'm just there uh, I'm just focused on my next fight me that's that, yeah. that's what I'm aiming towards and looking on getting this date confirmed and then start climbing the rankings then so this is how I see it right like UFC you can fucking have one fight a year yeah. right and, and get away with it and get paid mm. right couple of fights a year two, two tops right the likes of Paddy he's had a fight what last year was it um, I can't even remember but Paddy will have another yeah. fight and fucking whenever maybe yeah. at the end of the year mm. he's got to have one by the Be, end of I the year I think he's been injured though and he with, his, yeah. with his ankle but I know what you're saying like like the like so but, but, but like professional boxers they're on a regular fucking yeah yeah you know they're on a regular ring, fucking mm. about them, aren't they? You like you like yourself. You'll probably have how many fights in a year? Uh, if four or five or something. Four or five yeah. fights in a year. So, but, but depending on cl- injuries, like, but depending on injuries, but you're climbing that ladder. So mm. every fight that you you you've had, a, you fought is like say win win win, right? So seven, ten, fifteen. You got fifteen mm. wins now. Let's just yeah, for example, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, play yeah. the tape forward. Mm. Fifteen to twenty wins. Fucking most of them knockouts, stoppages. No losses, no draws. Yeah. Yeah. So you're ranked, right? People are looking at you know, this is what you want. Like mm. piece of McGrail, piece of McGrail. Let's get the hype going, right? Because you you deserve it. You know what I mean? You've you've gone through all that amateur yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. lad. There's no you haven't just turned <laughs> up, right? You've had to fucking fight to where you are. So it's they, they've got to build a hype, you know what I mean? Because you know, you wanna get like fucking million fucking dollar fights. That's the one. You know, get Eddie to go, mm. yeah, I want you know, I wanna fucking fight him. Mm. I wanna go to Mexico, I wanna go and fucking America. fight on the, the big you know, like yeah. this is where Of course. This is where the dream is, isn't it? Mm. In reality. Yeah. You know, and then retire at a fucking good age uh-huh. where you go, okay, mid thirties. Loads of dough, loads of cans. Yeah. Loads of dough, loads, loads of cans. It's the one, isn't it? <laughs> and then you can just go around and sell everyone look. I didn't have to go fucking selling drugs or yeah. fucking robbing fucking people to get where I am. I didn't end up in prison. Mm. And that's not to say that like people haven't. It's like the likes of Martin Murray. I've had Martin on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Martin, lovely fella. Mm. Fucking incredible boxer. Yeah, he's so Martin. Being in prison, being involved in selling drugs. Fucking should have been a world champion three times yeah. over. Mm. But just, just missed it every time, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, so that's the uh, the outcome in it. That's the yeah. goal in it, Pisa. A million percent, yeah. That's what... Um that's what like I've been working for since I was eleven, and yeah. haven't I? It's so, like right now it's seventeen years in the making, but for however long it goes, it's always I've always started it when I was eleven, and yeah. just about having like a bit of patience as well at the same time. Like I bo- box for years for yeah. don't rush it like you did with the. No, I mean it. money yeah. really. It's took what sixteen years before I turned pro, and it's still going to be a few more years before you start getting getting proper rewards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But there's always rewards anyway. You're always making everyone proud. But I mean, just um, it's just a, it's a li- lifetime of work, really, for for me. Not not just me. Obviously, all my family have supported me all the way. My coach, Paul Stevenson, Anthony Humphries now, Evan Red Triangle. It's all. It's just years in the making now, and we're starting. We're just we're getting each step of the way. We're getting closer and closer, and it's um, it, it's coming. It's it's. Well, you're still a young man, twenty seven, mm-hmm. right? Twenty seven, like, and, and people can say, "Oh, we start too late." You start like. Look, you've matured to a mm. point where you've gone like I've, I've been through this. Yeah. Right. So I've got to a stage now. You like you've got another what? Ten years mm. solid. Yeah. In the ring. Definitely. Mm. Easy. Right. Before what? You you can you were sparring, you got beat by a kid who was thirty six. No, no, no. You know, when his 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 fitness must have been his level of fitness must have been incredible. Yeah, it was you know what I mean? like so mm. if you just compare yourself to that no, after that, I mean, we we all know there's a fucking there's a fucking stop button on, <laughs> on boxers. You know, yeah. what I mean? you get to a point thirty eight forty, then people are starting yeah. to think, fucking. Hell. I remember them, um, <laughs> Carl the Cat Thompson, yeah, fourteen yeah, yeah. a day. I'm on it, yeah. Carl, fucking brilliant. <laughs> I like spoke to Carl, right? No, just not on. Just had a chat with him in his gym, and I was saying, mm. what? David A was knocking everyone out. He'd never been knocked out. He'd never yeah. been stopped. And then you get in the ring with him. You're forty years old, right? He's a young man. He's mm. fucking flying. What 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 did you do that was different from everyone else? He said I knew that he was going to come out fucking quick. Yeah. Right? He said and I knew <laughs> that I had something different than him. I had an engine. Yeah. Right? He said and I just knew if I kept my guard up, mm. kept marching, kept that engine going, just kept breathing. Right? He was going to gas. Yeah, yeah. And I could tell by the third round he was fucking gassing. He said I was on it just slowly, 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 letting her throw them punches on my arms, letting her throw them A-bakers. Mm. He said, and then that was it. Yeah. He said he was finished. It's, and, and it's it's people don't really really understand that. Like it is an art boxing. Mm. Yeah, it is, of course. You, if you don't think about like like you, you just said, get flattened, don't you? If yeah, you, just, you it, Well, I didn't get flattened, but I mean that's what I done. I just walked that this yeah. psyche there, thinking yeah. 
Well, not thinking yet. <laughs> but nah, you have you got to be switched on. Like it's just standard. See, I never fucking listened to me. Mm. My coach, right? I remember, right? He put me in the ring with this kid. He had loads of badges on his shorts, on his t-shirts. I had about six. fight. Is this a fight? This? Yeah, it's a, this is a, just a boxing in um, in the shorts as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking. I look at the fucking badges. He said, "Don't worry about them badges. They're all fucking camping badges and they're not boxing badges. Yeah, they're swimming." Yeah. They weren't, right? They were fucking badges. Uh, and he said, just go for the lock, because he was a soul kid, hit him in the stomach, and then go for the up, bang, bang. You'll always get him with that one. But he did. But every time I did that, drops, bang, bang, crosses, yeah. No, I, and, I, and I did him with the hook. Oh, I'd yeah. I'd stand back, and I'd admire the shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, that was all right, that yeah. one, I like that one. Yeah. No, instead of going for the kill, mm. always my fucking floor was admiring mm. me work. Instead of continuing to fucking carry on, Come on eh? and that's where you know I wasn't listening. Sat in the corner. You need to, you need to just focus, build, and just that's shot. build on it. Yeah, yeah. Your team plan didn't go to plan, mm. like you said, and then things started to ro- get rushed. Yeah. So obviously, like we said before, lessons learned. You're gonna learn a few different plans going forward, mm. right? So what's your coaching team like now? What's your, your yeah? Pro- she, that's probably quite a big part of it as well yeah. like obviously I've done everything I've done on the amateurs with my team team GB coaches in my yeah. corner you know what I mean I've got boss memories with them but I was I was missing my time in with Paul in Everton Triangle I've yeah. been there since the start I was 11 joined GB at the age of 18 when I first got on it was like Thursday to Sunday every other week so I would only I was only really missing two days every two weeks, no in Everton Head Triangle. But that was on the development and then I joined the podium squad then and it was Monday to Thursday every week, so I was just I was away from our gym. But I was getting yeah. boss experience, travelling all over the world, sparring, everything, but I was just missing missing our gym a little bit, you know what I mean? So I used to get in as much as I could. I used to try and get in as much as I could, but going back to around the COVID times, leading up to the Olympics and the qualifiers and that we were we they were having us down in Sheffield for like four weeks straight for um because of the COVID now in like a bubble. Yeah. So so before the Olympics I got for like eight weeks or something, six to eight weeks, I got basically no time with Paul. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And and whether that played a part in it, even like not like me boxing sense, it might have a me boxing sense, but you know, just mentally, even like yeah. mentally just like I don't know what it is, like he's it's just He's just been me coach since the start, and I just yeah. He's a solid, trust, he's a solid pillar. Do you know what it. I mean? Like yeah. So I've always, I always think, I don't know, always think about it. Not every day, but whenever I think, I always think like I wonder, like whether that would have played. Well, it definitely did play a part. Yeah, I wonder if it did. I know that would have played a part, even just a little, a little week or two with, with Paul before the Olympics might have just helped a little bit. You know what I mean? But we'll never know. But no. um, my coaching team now is just Paul Stevenson, Anthony Humphries. And then I've got me obviously my promotional team, uh, Match Dream Boxing at the end. The just the best promoter in the game behind me. So there's all I can see is success and belts and just good nights coming. Yeah, and I wish you well for the future. Mm-hmm. So we're coming to the end of the podcast because we could go on all day about yeah. fucking the past and the future <laughs> and what's what. So I always ask this question at the end, uh, Peter. What would you say to a young Peter, although you are young, but a young Peter McGrail, if you saw yourself coming through the doors of life, if you sh- could say look something different or give yourself a bit of guidance or advice what would you say to anyone out there uh, probably would say listen to people that are older than you because when you're younger you think you know it all when really <laughs> like I'm, I'm still young but I mean like I don't know just when you're a teenager you just you think you think you're the boy don't you yeah. you think you know everything you don't listen to your mind your dad but that's what I'd try and just say to someone, just like, if you can, just respect your older people, people around you, yeah. uh, respect their opinion, because they've, they've got more experience in life than you, basically, haven't they? Yeah, and um, people yeah. are only trying to help you, but you don't see that, then, no, do you? Do you think? Yeah, I totally agree, mate. I've, like, I've, 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 like I've, I've been on the receiving end of that, you know, like, you know, you see your lived experience and, you know, you're a predecessor, you've been in, done it, and people just look at you. But once they get to know you and what you've done and what you're about, they, they kind of look at you a little bit differently. Mm. So it's easy for me to go into into schools or to fucking youth clubs or boxing gyms where I speak to these kids and, and like share a little bit of experience, say, look, the path I took doesn't have to be the one you take. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
and maybe what I say now, and I'm under no illusion that well, like what I say is going to change your life. You know, if you're sitting there smoking your stars, hogging your cheese, and <laughs> you know, and you're looking at me like, what does he fucking know there, lad? That's what time's be time. I'm not asked. I'm not here to tell you what to do, where to mm. go, or how to live your life. I'm just going to tell you how it was for me and what might be different for you if you listen. And that is, I like what you've said there. It kind of hits home when you said, because with, with the youth comes that air of arrogance. Mm. You know, I don't want to listen to anything. You think you know everything. Uh, and I think that was a, an incredible piece of advice and a bit of guidance that you just shared there. So thank you mm. for that because... Yeah, listen to your predecessors, listen to the people who've been here. And with that, Peter, yes, Bill. thanks for your thanks time. Thanks, lad. Thanks.